During each iteration of our game's game loop, which is controlled by the canon thread class that we'll look at in a subsequent video, uh, we call the draw game elements method once per iteration of that loop, and we pass in the canvas that's used to draw onto the surface view. Now, the surface view's surface holder is used to interact with the surface view, and you can get from the surface holder the canvas that's for drawing onto the surface view. So we'll show you all of that when we look at the Canon Thread nested class in a subsequent video of this lesson. Now, when draw game elements does get called, the first thing we do here at lines 356 and 7 is call the canvas's draw rect method, which receives five parameters. The first two parameters indicate the upper left corner of the rectangle. The last, the next two parameters, excuse me, represent the the um, bottom right corner of the rectangle, and the last argument represents the painting characteristics. This is a paint object, and for this particular paint object, we configured it to have the color white for drawing purposes. So what this draw rect statement is doing is simply clearing the entire drawing area, and then we're going to redraw all of the game elements in their current positions on top of this newly white background. Now at lines 360 and 361, we show you how to use draw text, which is going to draw its string argument at the coordinates, or starting from, I should say, the coordinates that you specify, and using the paint characteristics that we configured in the text paint object earlier in this code. Now the highlighted part of the code that you see here is first getting the resources object so that we can use it to obtain resources such as strings in the strings.xml file. And then we call the resources object's get string method that has a variable length argument list where the first argument is a format string resource ID. So remember, time remaining format, when we looked at that in the strings.xml file contains a format specifier. So this is a string resource that represents a format string. And the next argument after that is the value that we would like to place into that format string. So we're going to create the formatted string as we get it, uh, get its uh, format string resource from the strings.xml file, and then we will paint that onto the canvas. Now, if the cannonball is on the screen, we will draw a circle at the cannonball's x and y coordinates using the cannonball's radius uh, to draw out from that center point, and the cannonball paint will specify the characteristics of the cannonball itself. And then we draw a line that represents the cannon barrel, and we do that starting from the x coordinate 0 and from the y coordinate that is half the screen height. And basically what this causes is the circle to be drawn, or the line, excuse me, to be drawn starting from the left side center of the screen, and we draw it to the end of the barrel using the cannon paint, paint object to specify the characteristics of that line. Then we draw the cannon's base as a circle, and in this case we draw the circle starting from x coordinate 0, and again from the screen height uh, divided by 2 for the y coordinate. And this causes that circle to be drawn half off the screen, so we wind up with a cannon base that's a semicircle at the left side of the screen. And again, we use cannon base radius to specify the radius of that circle, and cannon paint to specify the drawing characteristics of the circle. Next, we draw the blocker. So we have a canvas.draw line to draw the blocker using its coordinates and the blocker paint object. And then lines 380 through 404 work through the target pieces and draw all the different sections of the target. Now, as we work our way through, one of the things we have to do is check the hit state for each target piece because we only want to draw the target piece if it has not been hit yet. So you can see here that we're checking that, and then based on whether it's been hit or not, we also uh, set the target paint color to either yellow or blue because we have alternating colors for the different target pieces, and then we draw a line using that target paint uh, and specifying the current point X and current point Y, which are the beginning of the uh, current section, and also the uh, coordinates of the end of the line as well. 
and then finally the target paint is used to actually specify the drawing color and the line thickness for the current target section that we're dealing with.